The pain in your head is so painful, it's almost hard to describe. I have always said to people, don't ever let me own a gun because I think I'll probably shoot myself in the head to stop the pain. It's hard to imagine such extreme pain unless you've experienced it. But migraine is one of the leading causes of disability in the world. A large proportion of the population suffer from it, and if a medium migraine attack is lasting a full day, that's a lot of disability across a lifetime. Around one in five Australians suffer from migraine, which can cause excruciating head pain, nausea, sensitivity to light and sound, blurred vision and auras. Attacks can last for several hours or days, which not only causes chronic health and lifestyle problems, but also has a huge cost to society. The economic cost in Australia is enormous. It's estimated to be a little over $35 billion. That includes $14.3 billion in health costs, $16.3 billion in lost productivity, and just over $5 billion in other costs. 49-year-old Beth Murphy has been a migraine sufferer for more than 30 years. She's experienced migraine attacks once or twice a week since she was 16. The head in a vice, that sort of crushing feeling in your skull, that's probably the worst part. Sometimes it feels like a whole burning sensation around your head. Beth has tried medication, alternative therapies, and diets, cutting out coffee and chocolate, but nothing has worked. Desperate for help, she joined Professor Lynn Griffith's migraine trial at Queensland University of Technology. When I was doing the study, I definitely felt better. I did get less migraines during that period. The trial is ongoing, so at this point, Beth doesn't know what medication she was given, but some patients receive medication to lower blood pressure and cholesterol, and others receive placebos. If you know what genes play a role in a particular disorder, then you can start to get clues about the sorts of treatments that you can develop for those people. And so looking at the information we've been able to get from genes, we've been able to identify different ways we might like to develop new treatments. Professor Griffith says migraine can be inherited and three generations of her immediate family all suffer from the disorder. My mother got it very badly when I was a teenager. I also started getting it when I was a teenager. That continued through to my 20s, 30s, etc. And here was my son getting it at a much younger age. At four, he was having the nausea, the vomiting, sore head, and also these strange visual disturbances. There are also many different types of migraine and triggers. Triggers might be things like uh, bright lights, it might be barometric pressure changes, it might be strong smells such as strong perfumes. It can even be certain types of food like caffeine or chocolate or red wine. Professor Dal Nyholt is a genetics expert and he's analysing the data from Professor Griffith's migraine genetic studies. He's also working on the world's largest migraine study involving more than 100,000 patients across 12 research centres. We're just finalising results and now we're finding almost 100 genetic risk factors for migraine. A severe neurological condition, migraine is difficult for scientists to monitor because attacks happen in episodes. There's also no cure and treatment options are limited. So international scientific collaboration is crucial to learning more about this debilitating illness. We need clinicians, we need geneticists, we need people in the wet lab, we need statistical analysis. We also need to look at other things such as biological pathways. So it requires a huge amount of collaboration across different areas of science. And with almost a billion people around the world like Beth, desperate for pain relief, scientists are doing everything they can to find solutions. I would definitely hope for a cure for migraine so that people don't have to live like this and so I myself don't have to. I've spent over 20 years studying migraine headaches and I hope to be studying it for the rest of my life um, because there's just many more things for us to learn about it and if I can help those sufferers um, to live a life without migraine headaches then I think that that would be a, a life well worth lived.